Now let's get deep now. Um, let's talk about the prison industrial complex. What kind of, I gotta take off my, my, uh, <laughs> yes. this is so deep. Yes, it is. Wake up everybody, if you were sleeping, please wake up right now, <laughs> okay? Because we have mass incarceration in the United States of America. What does that mean? And a prison industrial complex, let's break it down, okay? Recently at the Academy of Woods, not this month, but in the recent past, there was an outcry that in terms of nominees, it lacked diversity, leading to the hashtag, Oscar so white. How many of you remember that? Yeah. We were yeah. all like social media, Oscars are so white. <laughs> you know, we're so upset. <laughs> Black Panther's here, so at least we have something to think <laughs> about. <laughs> These two black men that won Oscars, John Legend and Common, were compelling in their acceptance speeches. John Legend said the following, the U.S. is the most incarcerated country in the world, mm. as there are more black men under correctional control today mm. than there were under slavery in 1850. Mm. People are marching with our song. We see you. We love you. March on. Mm. Hashtag Oscar so white. Is that what you worried about? Mm. Mm. When our black men are locked up in numbers that are equivalent to slavery, mm. we are sitting here right now and there are black men. This is like during slavery when there were people who were slaves. And other people are like, look, hey, that's a shame. Look at them, they're just slaves. I'm so glad I'm free. Mm. Come on. That's so awful. And they were slaves, generation after generation mm. after generation. And we are their descendants. Yes, we are. Right now. And some people feel like they ought to be in there. They committed crimes. Well, newsflash. Mm. Some of them didn't commit a crime. Or at least that hasn't been determined. Why? Because they haven't even had a trial. They, they no can't more. even afford a lawyer. Say it. They're just sitting in those prisons. And some of them are so young. And they just sit. Some of them are so smart, mm. so brilliant, and they're just sitting there. Some of them are in there for marijuana, while marijuana is legal in other states. They are watching people smoke marijuana in prison while the people on the street really smoking it. Mm -hmm. And they didn't let them out. Say that. My goodness. And we're sitting here talking about we need health equity. <laughs> we need health equity, but we need a lot more than that. Yes, we do. We need freedom. <laughs> we need an actual freedom. Prison profiteers. Let's watch a little video. Guess what corporation makes an estimated 1.4 billion a year off sick prisoners? Meet Corizon, the country's largest prison healthcare company. Corizon treats more than 300,000 prisoners nationwide. The word treats is used loosely. Hmm. Son is incarcerated in the Arizona Department of Corrections in Tucson. He tried to have a It is damaging his liver and eventually will do the cirrhosis of the liver, go into liver cancer, and will kill him eventually if not treated. He is treatable and curable, but not receiving the proper treatment. My partner, Thomas Vogt, and he's been incarcerated here in Tucson, Arizona since 1994. He has an enlarged prostate, and there's also a growth there that needs a biopsy. Hello, we're talking about you. Did you get your pain meds yet? No, but it's not pain. I didn't get them. They just ignored me. I cannot tell you.
shape how many of the same kinds of stories we hear on a daily, weekly basis. This is what we call malpractice in the medical field. We save money because we skip the ambulance and bring them right to the morgue. Diane Jackson, Nurse at Horizon. In fact, they save so much money that they can pay their CEO nearly a million dollars. We are the industry pioneers. We are the innovators. Our team is unmatched in knowledge and passion. Six employees have resigned after two inmates at Metro Corrections here in Louisville died this year. Now, those employees are not corrections officers, but workers with Corizon, Louisville's jail health care contractor. There's no question that Corizon is profiteering from mass incarceration in this country. And my son's being told they have no protocol for treating anybody with hepatitis C, so they don't have permission to even give them medicine to prevent the hepatitis C. There are no medical services being provided, in my opinion. Horizon's getting taxpayer money in 29 states, and they're fined for more. The profit motive is inherently at odds with the mission of a correctional institution. There will always be a perverse incentive not to rehabilitate, not to treat. They need help, and we can't help them. Uh, the only thing we can do is fight for them. Fight the prison profiteers. So prison profiteers, new terminology, if you haven't heard it before, is happening, it's a reality, and this is not about health equity. This is health disparity gone awry. Mm. This is health disparity beyond what most of us can even comprehend. So, what is the solution? In and out of the prison system, take the profit out of healthcare. There should be no profit in our healthcare. So, as long as there's that profit incentive, we're going to have this kind of disparity, and we're not going to have equity. So, again, in my books, I write all about this. I tell the truth about this. It's in writing. The sources are there. You can find them. It's not me talking. It's researchers that have do nothing else but this work of trying to expose this. But we don't see them in the mainstream media, of course. You're not going to see them. Additional solution, stringent and comprehensive oversight of entities offering correctional health care. Permission for family members' involvement in ensuring the rights of their incarcerated loved ones. In terms of health care and beyond. The provision of optimal health care to all is a human right. Getting deeper, the school to prison pipeline. Mm. What? You know, every time I say these things, I can't believe it. <laughs> the school to prison, look at the little boy in the picture with the police around him. Isn't that an image that is just shocking? Because what is happening? Black boys suspended three times more than white yes, boys. Indeed. Black girls suspended six times more. That's the reality of what's happening. We have these intragender comparison of suspension rates. And we can see what is happening to little black girls as compared to white girls. Zero tolerance. This is why we're not gonna tolerate anything in our schools. Black children are facing disproportionate, harsher punishment than white students in public schools. Black students represent 31% of school-related arrests. The NAACP released a study, and this study, Misplaced Priorities, is about how every state in, the, in every state <coughs> in this nation, more money is going toward prisons than toward schools. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's prison profiteering, and there's an incentive to do it. Yes, it's Researchers have found that over-incarceration most often impacts priority and emerging majority population, and that it destabilizes communities. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Putting the fathers in prison is destabilizing the community? Really? Putting the children in prison from K through 12 is destabilizing the community? Oh, really? What about the mothers? Of course it's destabilizing the community. Do we even have to think about it? We don't need the research. We're living it. Our communities are living it, and we must stop the school to prison pipeline now. We have to be angry about it. We can't just be relaxed about this anymore. No more arrests of children in the K through 12 system. Listen to this solution. Really, I have to say it. Implement culturally competent measures in schools 
so that individuals know how to work with children of various races. Many people in this country don't even have a passport. They've never left this country. They don't know how people live in other countries, what they eat, what they think, what they do, how they drive. They don't understand. And so when people come in, come on in. We need you to work in our meat packing places and pick fruits and vegetables and do all those kind of things. But you know, we don't really know about you at all. Yep. We don't value you. We don't appreciate you. And this leads to problems, very serious problems. So why then do we have something called the school to prison pipeline? What's happening? So the bottom line is that we have what's called mandatory minimum sentences, felony plea bargains, we have three strikes law, yeah. immigration <coughs> detainment arrests, and this happens um, with children in schools. Yes. You get all of these things together, and you get cheap available labor with significant profits. Now that sounds so sinister. But it's real. Mm -hmm. Private prisons are now advertising themselves as an alternative to the hiring of low wage workers outside of the country. Yes. And then you ask the question why don't they want to raise minimum wage? Mm -hmm. Why should they? They have workers that work for nothing. Mm -hmm. And you thought corporations were just shipping jobs overseas? You thought no. that was a problem. That's what they've been telling us. Yeah. Companies have found people right here at home who work for as little as 93 cents an hour and cannot strike or take vacations. They're called prisoners. <coughs> the prison workforce is guaranteed not to have car problems, no need for babysitters. <laughs> They'll be on time for work and they're available whenever they are needed. They're not paid overtime. They don't receive benefits. They don't get social security pensions. Mm. Nor are they permitted to form unions or strike. They don't have paid leave, sick time, or otherwise. Approximately one million prisoners work for corporations. So, state prison labor in New Jersey, prisoner made 120 for eight hours of work in 1980, and today makes $1.30 for a day's labor. Now you're telling me this is not slavery. Will someone please tell me that this is not slavery? <laughs> it looks like it to me. So money is not only being made off of low-income communities, but it's being made off of people that are in prison. Yeah. Who may or may not have committed crimes. <coughs> Black men have been imprisoned in the race numbers. In order to keep prisons full, rampant imprisonment is now extending to other groups in substantial numbers, including women, poor white people, Hispanic people of all races, and immigrants. So if you look at the ACLU data, spend some time looking at that and you'll see that. Black girls now, the numbers are increasing substantially. African American girls and young women have fallen through the cracks. They are disproportionately detained as compared to their white counterparts. So the percent of able-bodied sentenced federal prisons required to work in a prison, 100%. There's your labor force. Factory owners are complaining. Federal prisoners are stealing our business. Federal prisoners. Sociologist Nikki Jones of UC Santa Barbara, black girls are not committing more crimes even though they are being incarcerated in record numbers. So it's not about more crime because that's what people will say, but they're committing more crimes. We have to lock them up, not true. I've been studying this for decades, says Dr. Chesney Glenn. We have never seen these kind of numbers before. National policies like zero tolerance are responsible for the school to prison pipeline and a dual justice system that treats white girls differently from black girls and disproportionately impacting African American girls. And she says more. Time is pressing upon me, so I'm going to move forward. But in various states, it's more significant than in others. So solutions stop corporations from using prisoners as cheap labor with little to no pay, which is a sinister form of greed, leading to an increase in corporate profits that can be likened to slavery in form and practice. Stop it. 
we need to stop this from happening now. My book title includes, let's talk about solutions, and the solutions are in it. The solutions are within the people, not the people put in office. This is how it looks. I created this model, it's in my book. This is in the middle of the issues, lower socioeconomic status and all of that, the unjust factors, the school to prison pipeline, the prison profiteers, and all that is going on there. That's the vicious cycle. That isn't ending, it's real. All of that that's in those boxes is actually real. And here's the ideal solution, health equity. That's why we're here. Economic justice and overall social justice, including food justice and cultural and linguistic competency in all areas. Quality education, quality education. Employment opportunities, people want to work. Universal health care and health literacy for all. Elimination of unjust escalating negative factors. Drug war, the school to prison pipeline, prison profiteering, and mass incarceration. Get rid of it. Questions? Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful uh, round of applause. You know, when an uneducated person becomes an activist, you have a force out of necessity. But when an educated person becomes an activist, you have a force of will. And I'm so glad that this person is an educated uh, individual who is a force for change and not out of necessity so much as out of will. And so it's an example for all of us uh, that we have to do things because it's the right thing to do and we have to have the will to do it. And I understand now why she uh, organized her own firm, because like uh, uh, Shirley Chisholm said, she's unbought. Stop unbought. Uh -huh.